Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I am going to test the resolver of the benchmark motors that we use in permanent magnet motors drive and control course. I am going to apply an excitation voltage to the excitation coil and measure the induced voltage to the phase A and B of the resolver and measure the position. So how we can test the resolver? First of all, let's review the structure of a resolver. Here as you can see in this figure, for a resolver we have one coil on rotor core and two coils on the stator core, the sine coil and the cosine coil. As you can see, the magnetic axis of the sine coil is perpendicular to the magnetic axis of the cosine coil. Yes, so the mutual inductance between the stator coils is zero. And the amplitude of the induced voltage in the sine coil and the cosine coil is a function of the rotor position. Okay, so by measuring the amplitude of the induced voltage to the sine coil and the cosine coil, we can measure the rotor position. Later in this video, we will measure the value of the induced voltages using the oscilloscope and also plot the actually the trajectory that displays the rotor position. So the Rotor coil is excited through a rotatory transformer. We apply an AC excitation voltage to this rotatory transformer to excite the rotor coil. The amplitude and frequency of the AC signal is different for different resolvers. The range of the frequency can vary from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, and also we have a range for the amplitude of the applied signal. Here in this experiment, I am going to apply a 1 kilohertz signal using a function generator and measure the value of the induced voltage. Also, we check the trajectory of the rotor position by applying different amplitudes of the AC excitation signals. So this is the process. We apply an AC excitation signal. We measure the amplitude of the voltage in the sine coil and cosine coil then we can measure the rotor position. During the course, we will learn how to generate the AC excitation signal using the microcontroller, and then how we can read the sine and cosine coil using the microcontroller, and how to calculate the rotor position. This is an absolute position sensor. Yes, so we can measure the rotor position when the power of the motor is off also. Okay, so now let's find out the terminals of the coils. Here, as you can see, for this resolver, we have seven pins. I am going to find which of these two pins 
are for the excitation coil and which all these two pins are for the sine coil and also for the cosine coil. I can measure the resistance between two pins. For example, if I measure the resistance between this pin and this pin, as you can see, I am getting nothing, right? So these two pins are not terminals of one coil. But if I measure the value of the resistance between these two pins, as you can see, the value of the resistance is equal to 39.2. Oh, right? So these two terminals are for excitation coil or for one coil of the stator. Let's measure the resistance between these two pins, this one and this one. Here, as you can see, the value of the resistance is 28.8. And if I measure the value of the resistance that we have between these two pins, is equal to 39, right, point 0.1, which is close to the resistance that we measured for these two pins. So, actually, the value of the resistance for two coils of the stator core are the same. So this is the sine or cosine coil, these two pins and these two pins are for actually another one. These four pins are for two coils of the stator because the stator coils are identical and these two pins are for the excitation coil. Also, this pin in center of the connector is connected to the body of the motor, the frame. Okay, now let's apply the excitation signal and measure the value of the induced voltage to the sine coil and the cosine coil. Here, I am going to apply a 1 kilohertz signal, the AC signal, and the amplitude, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 3 volts, the amplitude is 1.5. Okay, the amplitude of the AC excitation signal. And here, these two are terminals of the excitation coil, this red wire and this white one. Here, I'm going to measure the excitation signal first. Let's turn on the signal. Here you can see the excitation signal. The frequency is one kilo. Hertz. Now let's measure the value of the induced voltage to this coil. Okay, let's turn on this channel and use the auto set option okay so the channel one displays the excitation signal and the channel two is the 
induced signal voltage to this coil. If I rotate the rotor, as you can see, the amplitude of the induced voltage changed by the rotor position. Okay, so let's measure the induced signal to this coil also and check yes when i change the rotor position when i rotate the shaft the amplitude of the induced voltage changed by the rotor position so as you know the magnetic axis of the sign coil is perpendicular to the magnetic axis of the cosine coil. So when we have maximum voltage here, maximum, the value of the induced voltage in the next coil of the stator, this one, should be minimal. So let's measure. As you can see, for this rotor position, when the amplitude of the induced voltage is zero here, we get the maximum of the amplitude of the induced voltage here. And if I rotate the rotor position, yes, in this case, we have zero signal here, and we should have maximum amplitude in this coil the sine coil and the cosine coil so by measuring the amplitude of these two signals using the adc of the microcontroller we can measure the rotor position so now let's plot the trajectory of the rotor position by measuring the induced voltage to these two stator coils. So here, if I measure this voltage here also, Let's press the auto set. You know, because here I have zero voltage, the auto set is not working fine. So just rotate the rotor a little bit. Here, as you can see, when I rotate the rotor, the amplitude of one excitation signal increases and the amplitude of the another one decreases. Now let's press the display option on oscilloscope and plot x versus y. Okay, so you can see this trajectory and when I rotate the rotor position Clockwise, as you can see, that trajectory also rotate clockwise. Yes, this is an absolute position sensor, right? So, by exciting the excitation coil of the resolver, when the power of the motor is off, we can measure the rotor position also unlike incremental encoders right we have to set the rotor position first and start measuring the rotor position anyway you can repeat the same experiment and test the resolver of the benchmark motors on your side then we continue 
by developing a program to excite the resolver and measure the rotor position. Thanks for watching.